cartoons? Sometimes. They get boring. At least the good guys win. My dad says good guys don't win in real life. And if they do, they turn into bad guys. What about Ozzy Smith? He's a good guy. I don't know. I hope so. I wish there was a way to find out. Me too. For Christmas time, I would always buy the, he and his brother balls to play with, and I would buy him too and his brother too. But he would wind up with all of them. <laughs> He'd take them and put them in a bag and hide them and play with them one by one. I can't remember the day that someone came to me and said, hey, you know, you go out and you be the shortstop. It seems like it was something that was always there. I'm most, most comfortable here because I can create as I feel free. I can do things here that, that makes me feel good about myself. He would play ball in the morning, noon and night. He would play ball in bed. I didn't have any real heroes when I was growing up, um, but I think my mom and dad were probably the people that, that kept me on the right track and told me the right things. And, and believing in people, I think, is something that starts at home. Everything that, that probably has to deal with the world's problems today, uh, I think, can be remedied a little bit by the way a kid is reared at home. Well, the one thing about Oz is that he never stops thinking of ways that he can improve himself. When you're playing catch, don't, don't be moving, doing too much movement, because then you can't follow the ball, okay? Now watch the ball all the way to your glove. Oz is one guy that uh, I always look forward to for advice, and you know, he lo ones love to tutor me around, so I call him my father. <laughs> he's true, you know, he's caring, he's uh, trustworthy, you know, I mean, everything that you would ask in a, in a person, you know, he's got it. Slide, good night, <laughs> come on, Ryan. That's why they call you the wizard. Right there. Mm. What's he doing? Uh-oh. Uh, like, oh, what? I can do that. Oh, he's only out by five. That would have been me. You'd have been putting that ball in your back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that, he, went, he went down the lane. Down the lane. That's DP Lane. Oh, Gary. Gary. What are you doing? Gary. Gary. Gee. <laughs> there he is, the wizard. Who is that character? Was that, that, was that your rookie year? Oh. <laughs> 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 um, that was a good one. See, he, see, to see yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. See, you uh -oh. could do that against them cats. If that had been me yesterday, <laughs> it'd have been. <laughs> You've been out. Look at Park. Park. Been out. Big, oh. Come on, Parkway. Down the lane. Down the lane. He's fine. He can run then. Mm. Oh, oh, 
Oh, good yeah, night. George, that's you. right. That's when I had on. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> he was a rookie. Yeah. <laughs> I was a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz, and I did a lot of voices in the movie, Follow the Yellow Brick Road. And then I found out that there's a Cardinal baseball player known as the Wizard of Oz. He is truly. And I've seen a lot of great ones, I think, with the Cardinals and other clubs. Marion, DeRocher, Reach, Rizzuto, others, and he's the best I ever saw. Of all the ball players I've managed, and I've had some great ball players, great talented ball players, but I've never seen a guy that does a job off the field like you do. I have never seen a guy take the time, sign autographs, talk to people, and do the things that Ozzie Smith does. And I, I don't know how you do it. I mean, I, I wish I could be a little bit more like that at times, but. Uh, you're the greatest I've ever seen that. He's very motivated, he's very driven to, to succeed and, and have that be a framework of team success. He's the best shortstop in the world. I think all clubs realize that. Everybody's uh, uh, pretty much uh, convinced that he's the best shortstop that ever lived. Nobody will ever be better than Ozzie. Ozzie's probably a role model for not only our players in the minor leagues, but for probably kids all over. Anybody that's seen Ozzie play, I think they all like him. They want to be like him and try to do what he does. Overrated? He couldn't be overrated in Russell when they give him two million. Well, all right, the people, oh, they don't like that. But the cat deserved the money. I'm just calling, that's my slang, a cat. That cat knows his business. Then another thing, he's sharp dresser. See what I mean? What else you want to know? You got the greatest nickname in baseball, the Wizard of Oz. How, how did you get that nickname? Well. You know, most of my friends call me Oz, and of course, that being associated with the with the movie, the the Wizard of Oz, uh, they just started. Osborne is a is a tough name to pronounce, and they didn't want to go around calling me Osborne, so they call me Oz for short. Deep in the hole, look at Ozzy, the Wizard of Oz, throws him out. When I was in San Diego, um, there was a lot of uh, there wasn't much stability at all, and uh, there was like a revolving door and. You know, coming over here has been great, not only for me, but for my family as well. He's very good with young players. He sits down, he talks to them about feeling, talks to them about baseball in general. I think when the Cardinals got Algy Smith, it brought a World Series to St. Louis. I came over, and uh, lo and behold, that same year, we were able to win the World Series. Long one into left field off the bat of Smith. Over diving is the left field. He can't get it. It goes off the wall. Lonnie digs for second. He's around second. He's around third. They're going to try to score him. Here's the throw. He is safe. It's an inside the park home run. Rummer's the big runner. He's at third. Two down. Sacks jam. Lavelle at the belt. Checks. Brummer's stealing home. He is safe. And the Cardinals win. Brummer stole home. The dugout comes out and they congratulate him. You wouldn't believe it. Willie McGee against Bill Gullickson. The pitch coming. Swing and a fly ball into left center. Dawson on the run, on the run, on the run. He can't get it. The ball goes to the wall. Two runs score. McGee may circle the bases. They bring him around third base. He's trying to score. The throw home. He is safe. And inside the park home run, and the Cardinals lead four to nothing. A single by Green, a sacrifice by her, and the pitch to Obert Bell. Swing and a shot to right center field. Butler's on the move. He cannot get it. And the winning run scores. The Cardinals have won the game four to three. And they lead two games to none. Now he swings and hits it down the line and right. That's gonna go. Adios. Fly ball to deep left. This one is at the track, and McGee jumps and he caught it to the plate. Swing and a ground ball base hit. The Cardinals take the lead. Suter from the belt to the plate. A swing and a miss. And that's a winner. That's a winner. A World Series winner for the Cardinals. He always would tell me, said, but Ma, I'm so small. And I'd tell him, smallness does not make any difference if this is what you want to do. You've got to realize how hard Ozzy has worked to be able to do what, uh, uh, what he does on the field and, and how much he puts into the game for three hours a night. He's just total concentration. He takes all kinds of ground balls, high choppers, uh, balls to his left, balls to his right, uh, balls that he has to charge. And uh, so that when he, when he encounters these types of plays in the game, uh, there's no situation or no play that's new to him. Never missed a day, was always there, never got hurt. Great pair of hands, everything you want. 
and you can play with the guy. He understood, never missed a sign. You know what it means not to miss a sign? Third base coaches miss signs. He never missed a sign. I believe, and I've always been taught, that you only get out of something what you put in. And I think if that, if that is put into your mind at a young age, as it was for me, um, it, it will stick with you throughout your life. And uh, that's what has allowed me to, to excel. Even the average fan who sometimes resents the high salaries always say, when you talk about Ozzie Smith, now there's one guy who has really earned his money. And the more he makes, the harder he works, the better he gets, the harder he works. Everything Ozzy, Ozzy's got, he's, he's worked extremely hard for it. Uh, me and Ozzy grew up in the, in, in the same same neighborhood in Southern California, and it, it was some rough times down there. But you know, you have to keep a positive head, and you have to be determined and show a lot of hard work and dedication. And that's what Ozzy Smith did, and that's why he's the player he is today. We lived in the ghetto all at once. And, and it didn't bother them, and it didn't bother me too well, because we know we were there. We had to work to get out. He's making $2 million a year and acting like he's trying to break into double figures. He's a hungry star. They wouldn't be giving him that bread for nothing. Now, when I told you, when I said bread, I mean money. Ozzie Smith understood the game of baseball at a very young age, was brilliant from day one. In fact, he does things now that no one has ever done before. His range is the thing that really impresses me. Uh, I think that he gets a real good jump on the ball. I think that he studies uh, the pitchers, he studies the hitters, and uh, he seems to already have uh, two steps on the ball before it's even hit. The bad thing about being in the American League, one of the bad things is not getting a chance to see him play on a, on a daily basis. Uh, I've seen him on TV many times, and whenever they show great plays of the week, they always show about four of Ozzy stints. Uh, he's uh, incredible. What I try and do is I, I try and compare players on my team, uh, how I would defense Vince Coleman. And it, the way I would defense Vince Coleman would be, uh, first of all, is I have to cheat in a lot more. I know that I have to handle the ball cleanly. So now, when we turn around and talk about offense from Vince Coleman, uh, I, t I relay all these things to him that, hey, you got a lot of things going for you. So once you start hitting the ball sharply because they've got to cheat in, it's going to open his game up that much more. He's a, a well-known, sensible guy. Uh, he loves to have a lot of fun each and every day. Check it out. That's the best play I've ever seen. Ooh. Did you see that? Barehanded. <laughs> Look at it. Check it out again. Now, see, only people with hands can do that. Can they teach that? And then he's out. Can they teach that, though? They can't teach that. They can't teach that. Yeah, they can't teach that. I can relate to this. Yeah. <laughs> Started in yeah. the 86 season. Yeah, 86. OJ. Yeah. He probably got it now where he can come up and return on watch, his feet. Huh? Watch this here. Yeah, watch. Watch his reaction at the end of this. <laughs> Hi, so, Mom. Uh, the camera's <laughs> on me now. We have noise. <laughs> <laughs> so this noise yeah, is definitely. That must be me. That must be me. Look at that. Look at that. That's against the pod. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Look at all oh, the oh, you went for it. I was going to stop, but then uh, they blew oh, What it. you going on? <laughs> That's when I could run. Safe? Oh, Safe. man. Good night. Good night. No, that's over his head. That's over uh, Gary Reedus. Gary Reedus. <laughs> uh, hey, Gary. Hello. It was fun for me to find out what Ozzy Smith felt about that play, and he felt that that was his best play, and it was fun for me to say that I was there. I'm glad I wasn't the hitter. The play he made diving out and then the ball taking a bad hop and then barehanding it and getting up and throwing the guy out it was just incredible. I felt that uh, umpiring myself would be a lot better uh, when I got to the big leagues. And I found that to be a disappointment. Um, the level of consistency is, is not there. Um, that's not to say that every umpire is, 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 is a bad umpire, but the level of consistency, as far as I'm concerned, is balls and strikes, safe and out. It's, it's not there. And um, I've seen that deteriorate a lot more over the last three or four years. When I came to the big leagues, it seemed like the umpires were a lot better. I'm talking about the strike zone was more consistent. Uh, they hustled a little bit more. and. Uh, we still have a lot of good umpires, but we have a lot of umpires that aren't competent major league umpires. And uh, when you talk to the league president or you talk about it, it's, they say, well, uh, it's a union, you know? Well, to me, uh, don't tell me when you watch a guy umpire for six years and you know he's not a major league umpire that the league president doesn't know. Right. And if he's a league president, he says he's incompetent. I don't see why some of these guys can't be replaced. The game of baseball, I think, is a game of ups and downs. You want to try and have more ups than you do downs. You should not be afraid with Ozzy Smith, especially on a turf like this, of throwing sinker balls, keeping the guys hitting the ball on the ground. When you don't have a good defensive infill, then you're more apt to throw the ball so to rise and to keep them hitting balls in the air. You just have to learn, if you're a left-hand pitcher, why was McNally and why was Cuellar so successful in Baltimore? Because they had Belanger and Brooks Robinson. And we have the same thing here, and there's no reason that a left-hand pitcher shouldn't be very successful with the dimensions of our stadium and the defense we've got on the left side of the infield. backflip that everybody I'm sure stops you and says oh Ozzy you do the backflip how did that start well actually it started as um, uh, one day in spring training I was tumbling and uh, Gene Tennis had a couple girls that were in the gymnastics and he told me he said you know I, I'd love for my girls to see you do that because they enjoy doing that he said uh, maybe one day during the season before we you go out on the field you'll do it you know they'll come down early and you'll do it well it, it never worked out during the season so finally um, at the end of the season, the girls were there, and uh, Gene Tennis says to me, he says, you know what would be great for you to go out on the field and do the flip on your way out to your position? In 1985, I hurt my shoulder, and uh, di actually diving back into first base, and it started an impingement, and I eventually ended up tearing my rotator cuff. And uh, the organization at that point said that they would rather me not do it.
Who knows? Maybe if we get into the playoffs and into the series, maybe maybe I can resurrect it. You take a play a game, which he makes, that wouldn't get made by an ordinary shortstop. Sometimes that could be a two-run play. It was a ball hit, and he was in the air, and his body was pointing to left field, and I don't, I still don't understand how he adjusted his body and made the throw to first base, you know, and, and, and the guy just happened to be, you know, kind of kind of not running hard to first base, and it would happen to somebody like Ozzy Smith, and it makes it a great play, you know, and he got the ball over there like he usually does from any angle. You hit the ball at the middle, you hit the ball in the hole, and you think you got a chance at a hit. You know, you play the Cardinals, and uh, um, I, I would imagine everybody runs a little bit harder when they hit, it, hit the ball left side of the infield towards Ozzy. I've seen him make plays that uh, you make you shake your head at because uh, of the way his body reacts to certain situations. He completely turns around, jumps up, throws to first base all in one motion, and it's, it's something to watch. Every time I talk to Ozzy, I tell him, you know, to play me one way and not take all my hits away because, you know, he's, he has tremendous range and he does a lot of different things and he, he gets the balls faster than anybody. You know, when he dives, he gets up quicker than anybody. And very, very seldom you see him throw the ball hard. So um, when we just talk, I'm just telling him, you know, to stay away from my balls. I'm spoiled. I'm sure the rest of the Cardinal players are. If he wasn't out there, we all would be, uh, wouldn't know what to do almost because he makes it a, our job so much easier. Two balls, no strikes to count. How about a shot into the right field corner, kid? Ozzie stealing the pitch. One on base hit. Here comes Ozzie. That's a winner. Swing and a base hit. Pass third. That's a winner. Here comes De Jesus. Two to one Cardinals. A game and a half in front. Nice going. Vince Coleman. Here's another. Swing and a long one into left field, into the corner. Foster watches it go for a home run. Cesar Cedeno on an 0-2 count puts the Cardinals on top one to nothing and may have put them back into first place. Here's his pitch. Fastball hit to left. It's deep to the track. Range could be. It's gone. Tommy Hur hits a two-run homer. The Cardinals pull off. Another miracle! Three-two pitch. Swing and a shot to right center field. In the gap. To the wall. A run is scored. Here comes Lois. He scored. The Cardinals lead five to four. Here's the pitch. Swing and a line drive into right. May fall. Van Slyke, that's a winner. And they've won the Eastern Division and headed into the playoff against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Smith, Cork's running to right down the line. It may go. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. It's a home run. And the Cardinals have won the game by the score of three to two. And a home run by the Wizard. Go crazy. was at home <laughs> but you would have thought it was a house full of people there and I was alone when he talked about it afterwards he said I was just trying to get a good pitch to hit and I was just trying to you know really drive the ball and, and just get get it in play <laughs> I, I really wouldn't like to tell you what I did <laughs> but you could hear the cheers going up it still gives me chills to to think about it
Dodger right-hander is set, and here's his pitch to Jack Clark. Swinging it along one into left field. Adios, goodbye, and maybe that's a winner. A three-run homer by Clark, and the Cardinals lead by the score of seven to five, and they may go to the World Series on that one, folks. Everybody always talks about, well, Ozzy's the best defensive player in the game, but he can't hit. He can't swing the bat. And I think Oz turned things around on people, and I'm glad to see him do so. For many years, I just worked, 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 and, and was never really able to, to bring it all together. And it wasn't until I started understanding what it was that I wanted to try and achieve um, and, and getting locked in my mind what was right and what was wrong that uh, things started falling into place for me. When he comes up and, and maybe he hasn't gotten a hit, I'm saying to myself, Oz, be patient, wait wait and then I say get a hit Oz feel after you make a great play um, do, you, like, do you have a big smile on the inside you, you know when you were a kid and you would make a good play and you, you wanted to smile but you knew it wasn't part of the game you never saw the pros do it do you have a big smile on the inside when you know you've done well it's a gratifying feeling especially for me because I was always known as a defensive player and uh, over the last few years um, I've been able to, to experience the other half of it and I think that's what all ball players try and do they try and be as complete as they possibly can and and to be able to to put both ends of it together is the greatest feeling in the world see this right here think you can hit that no, let's see. Go I'll tell you what why don't you why don't you get this right here Get close to this line right now, okay? Alright, ready? OJ is getting to the, he's five, and he's getting to the point that he really understands what's going on, and, and he understands dad is signing autographs, and these people think he's really something special, and they think I'm something special, and, and they ask him to sign autographs from time to time, <laughs> which he really <laughs> enjoys. <laughs> and, um, but at the same time, when we get home, he realizes I'm not going to ask him to sign any autographs. <laughs> I'm going to ask him to pick up his shoes and put his clothes away and just realize we're at home and, and we're all equally as important as, as everybody else. Knowing sometimes, though, that dad is, has to be, we have to treat him a little special because he, he's out of town a lot. 
OJ knows that, that dad has to have special treatment from time to time and, and that he needs rest or he's not feeling well or he has an ache or a pain here or there. Um, sore knee. Yeah, yeah, sore knees, sore this, sore that. <laughs> I just want to be sure to stop like my dad. If that's what you want, you can do it. I mean, all you got to do is want it, but it takes work to get there. We do have our rough spots, and I think it's communication and everything that allows us to overcome whatever obstacles we may run into as a family. With as much as he travels, those moments we try and keep to a minimum. We, we know that with you being out of town so much that with you going on an 11-day road trip and being home for four days, that if we don't make the most of those four days, you're going to be gone again for another seven. So we, we have to make sure that if we get angry, we get angry and then we get over it. And, and we realize that, that these things do happen, but... After she says, I'm sorry, everything's fine. <laughs> That's my hair then. That's why yeah. watch how my hair blow in the wind. Like, uh, <laughs> Look how it bounces. Yeah, it's with a curl for the girls. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you so aggressive though, you know. You, you be running after me. You go out there That's right, you man. You Whitey there. told me, he says, let me tell you something. He said, with them two guys out there, he said, go out as far as you can go. <laughs> Take everything you can get. <laughs> no, nah, he didn't say that. No play hero. Jackie no Robinson. Play. Jackie Robinson, all over again. <laughs> Bring back memory, then. Ozzy could be a manager, a general manager. Uh, if he wants to go on the field, stay on the field, he can do that. An executive of any kind, Ozzy's got the, uh, the capabilities, the intelligence, the understanding, and he gets along well with people. We're always talking about different situations in the in the ball game, in the dugout. And uh, he's the type of guy that's always thinking an inning or two ahead of, uh, of everything else. If you talk about somebody managing, they have to want to be a manager in their heart. And if, if Ozzy would want to be a manager, I'm sure that he could be a good one because uh, I think the same type of determination that he has displayed as a player would manifest itself uh, as a manager. He's one that usually usually is right about what he says, and it's something where he might make a good manager, but I don't know if I'd want to play for him when he's upset. Right now, I have no, no goals or no aspirations to be a manager. Uh, personally, I don't feel that I would have the control. Now, if I was able to have the control of being able to put the, pers the people on the field that I want to put on the field, then, you know, it's something that I would I would toy with. Ozzy will make a good manager. He has good players. <laughs> <laughs>
feel about when you're at the plate or after you make a great play in the field and you hear the Ozzy, Ozzy chant in the background? What goes through your mind when you hear that? 40,000 people saying that. I guess when that happens, it, it really sort of puts a little bit more pressure on you, you know, because you know that there are 30,000, 40,000 people out there pulling for you and, and and it makes you want to excel that much more you know so at that instance you know you may want to want to hit the ball a little bit harder than you normally would in 1986 at the end of the season he built himself up with a strengthening program which can be dangerous in baseball but he knew he was what he was doing and he looks like Popeye with those little muscles and he put on the weight there's a guy that, that's not a big home run hitter that uh, still is probably one of the most popular players in the history of the game you see he gets 2.4 million votes in the all-star game and there's a reason for that. He's the best. He's he's so smooth in his defense. He's talented. He's acrobatic. Ozzie Smith can't be overrated. He's probably the best shortstop in all of baseball and possibly in baseball history. Usually he makes an outstanding catch, which he makes look routine for him because like he does it every day. I met him the other day in the garage, and he's a nice person. He gave us two tickets to the baseball game. I've been watching baseball for 23 years now, and I haven't seen anyone that compares with Ozzie Smith. I absolutely. Everybody in St. Louis is an Ozzie Smith fan. He's one of the most remarkable ball players that's ever, ever played the game. He is a hero to me. But see, I don't think he really wants to be a hero. You know, he just wants to be a person like everybody else. I'm telling you, I've seen Honey Band, I've seen Lou Butroll. They were hitting short there, but they couldn't get the ball this man got. Ozzy Smith uh, is someone that I think a baseball fan would come to watch play defense and maybe stay an extra inning or two and, and buy a couple more sodas or a couple more boxes of popcorn. Uh, uh, to, to, just in case Ozzy might make an acrobatic play. When you hit the home run, you, you're doing it all yourself, but uh, it's all for you. But when you when you make a great defensive play to, to save a couple runs or, or, or to keep your team in a, in a ball game, it's, it's real gratifying. I like to hit because I like to hit a lot of home runs, and I know how to hit a lot of home runs. Swing and a high fly ball in the right. That ball's still going. Back at the way. The 1985 season, it was a great pennant race, neck and neck, the Mets and the Cardinals. What happened in that season really catapulted a great rivalry between the two teams. Well, it did. Uh, you know, there's usually a lot of, um, a lot of talk coming out of that camp, and uh, <laughs> that usually spurs on a lot, of, um, a lot of animosity, a lot of bad feelings. And uh, let me say that I, I think that, you know, though we may have a rivalry, it's not one of maliciousness directed at everybody over there. It's basically from the, the people that love to talk over there. Off the stretch of Roscoe. Here's the pitch. Swing and a long one in the left field. Way back in the corner. Grand slam! A grand slam home run by her. And that's the winner. 12 to 8. McDowell checks and pitches. Swing and a long one into center field. Back is Mookie Wilson. Back, back. This is going to leave the park. It does. We are tied. Terry Pendleton with a two-out, two-run homer. Well, you got to love it. I'd have to pick him as one of my favorites, you know. Uh, he's because of the fact that he's always patient, you know. He can have the roughest day out here on, on the ball field as possible, and he'd leave out of here and walk over to the parking lot, and there'll be 200 kids out there, and he'd sign every autograph around. People talk about him even more now because he's a 300 hitter rather than the 250 hitter he was uh, three or four years ago. There's always somebody in, in baseball's past that people say are better than today's players, but I think it's an accepted fact now that Ozzy Smith is the greatest fielding shortstop of all time. And, and I mean by a long shot. I've told you before, I've never seen any in the greater. I'll always remember him as one of my favorites because of his ability, his attitude, and, and his overall understanding and appreciation of others, and that leadership he's got. He really wants to win. 
over 30 years old, and he thinks he's going to be a better player tomorrow than he was today, and maybe he is. And Ozzy always has that smile. The heroes are definitely very much alive and well, and, and he is definitely one. I want to be not only the best baseball player that I can be, but even more importantly, I want to be the very best father that I can be. He'll be at my wedding. He's just the one and only, you know, the Ozzy Smith. <laughs> What else you want to know?